Hello, 7 graders. We are going to start Chapter 7, Pulmonary Respiration. Respiration. Process of absorption of oxygen gas and rejecting or releasing of carbon dioxide gas. All animals breathe. Day and night, all animals breathe. Aquatic animals have respiratory organs that differ from the respiratory organ of terrestrial animals. The respiratory organs assure the gaseous exchange between the organism and the air. Types of respiration in aerial medium, medium containing air. Pulmonary respiration by the lungs. Tracheal respiration by the trachea and cutaneous respiration by the skin. All mammals respire by their lungs. Grasshoppers and terrestrial insects use the trachea to respire and the, the earthworm and the frog use the skin to respire with. Pulmonary respiration this is the respiratory system of a human. The respiratory system is a group of organs that participate in respiration. The respiratory system is divided into two parts, the respiratory tract where air pass and the lungs. The lungs contains millions of small bags called pulmonary alveoli. The respiratory movement consists of inhalation and exhalation. Inhaled air passes, inhaled air which is rich in oxygen gas, passes from the nostrils, which are the opening of the nose, into the nasal cavities, then into the pharynx, larynx, trachea, bronchi, bronchioles, and then finally into the pulmonary alveoli. The pathway of exhaled air which is rich in carbon dioxide gas, starts from the alveoli, pulmonary alveoli, then into the bronchi bronchioles, then into the bronchi, a trachea, larynx, pharynx, nasal cavities, and are rejected outside the body through the nostrils. The difference between inhalation and exhalation. First, Inhaled air is rich in oxygen gas and exhaled air is rich in carbon dioxide gas. During inhalation, look at the picture please, the muscles of the thoracic cage and the diaphragm contract. This is the diaphragm, this is the diaphragm. It's a muscle that separates the thoracic cage, the thoracic cage protects the lung, it separates the thoracic cage from the abdomen. During inhalation, the muscles of the thoracic cage and the diaphragm contract. The ribs, as you see in inhalation, are lifted up and increase the volume of the thoracic cage. The lungs dilate and inhaled air enters the lungs. During exhalation, the muscles of the thoracic cage and the diaphragm relax. The ribs are lowered down and decrease the volume of the thoracic cage. The lungs compress and exhaled, exhaled air leaves the lungs. Gas exchange between the pulmonary alveolus and the blood. This is the pulmonary alveolus and this is a blood vessel carrying blood. First, the inhaled air enters the pulmonary alveolus rich in oxygen gas. At the same time, blood entering the lungs is rich in carbon dioxide gas. Why it is rich in carbon dioxide gas? Because it is coming from the body organs. The body organs use the oxygen gas or consume the oxygen gas to work and at the same time they reject the carbon dioxide gas into the blood. The blood transports carbon dioxide gas and enters into the pulmonary alveolus. At the level of the pulmonary alveolus, the carbon dioxide diffuses from the blood vessel into the pulmonary alveolus and the oxygen gas of the inhaled air diffuses from the pulmonary alveolus into the blood vessel. The blood carries the oxygen gas again into the body organs. 
and the carbon dioxide gas which is harmful is rejected outside the body by the exhaled air or by exhalation. Now, let's uh, make a comparison between the inhaled air and the exhaled air. Here, in 100 milliliter of inhaled air, contains 79 milliliter of nitrogen gas, 21 milliliter of oxygen gas, and 0.03 milliliter of carbon dioxide gas. At the other side, in 100 milliliter of exhaled air, it contains 79 milliliter of nitrogen gas, 16 milliliter of oxygen gas, and 5 milliliter of carbon dioxide gas. The volume of nitrogen gas remains the same. This means that nitrogen gas is not absorbed by the body, is not absorbed by the blood. While here the, um, the, uh, the volume of oxygen gas <coughs> decreases or the difference in the volume of oxygen gas between inhaled air and exhaled air is 20, 21 minus 16, 5 milliliter. So this volume of oxygen gas the difference in this volume of oxygen gas is absorbed by the blood. Now, let's talk about the carbon dioxide gas. The difference between the carbon dioxide gas of the exhaled air and that of the inhaled air is equal approximately to 5 milliliter. This means that 5 milliliter of carbon dioxide gas is rejected from the body by exhalation. It's rejected from the blood or from the body. Now, in order to make a comparison between blood entering the lungs and blood leaving the lungs. The blood entering the lungs, 100 milliliter of blood entering the lung contains 15 milliliter of oxygen gas and 53 milliliter of carbon dioxide gas. The blood leaving the lungs contains 20 milliliter of oxygen gas and 48 milliliter of carbon dioxide gas. The difference in oxygen gas between blood entering the lungs and blood leaving the lungs is 5 milliliter. This is the volume of oxygen gas that enters the body from enters into the blood vessel from the inhaled air and the volume the difference between the volumes of carbon dioxide gas between blood entering the lungs and blood leaving the lungs is also 5 milliliter which is the amount of oxygen gas <coughs> released in the exhaled air this is the difference between the carbon the carbon the volumes of carbon dioxide gas between the blood entering the lungs and blood leaving the lungs. Diffusion of gases. Process where gases are transferred moves from regions of relatively high concentration, volume or pressure to regions of relatively low concentration, volume or pressure. Let's see how. Look at this picture. Here, oxygen gas diffuses from the pulmonary alveolus into the blood, into the blood vessel. Okay, let's see why oxygen gas diffuses from the pulmonary alveolus into the blood vessel. The inhaled air contains 21 milliliter of oxygen gas and the blood entering the lungs here contains 15 milliliter of oxygen gas. The volume of oxygen gas inside the pulmonary alveoli is greater than the volume of oxygen gas inside the blood, uh, inside the blood vessel in the blood entering the lungs. So, Oxygen gas diffuses from the region containing high, uh, higher volume of, uh, of oxygen into a region containing low volume of oxygen gas. At the same time, the inhaled air contains 0.03 milliliter of oxygen gas, of carbon dioxide gas, and the blood entering the lungs contains 53 milliliter of oxygen gas, of carbon dioxide gas. So, Carbon dioxide gas will diffuse or diffuses from the blood containing higher volume of carbon dioxide gas into the pulmonary alveolus containing a small volume of carbon dioxide gas. Gas exchange between the blood and the body organs. Look at the picture please. At the level of the organs, the organs consume the oxygen gas and reject the carbon dioxide gas. So, the carbon dioxide diffuses from the organs into the blood vessel. After that, the blood carries carbon dioxide gas into the lungs. At the level of the lungs or at the level of the pulmonary alveoli, carbon dioxide gas diffuses into the pulmonary alveoli and oxygen gas diffuses from the pulmonary alveoli into the blood. Then the blood carries oxygen gas again into the body organs. 
characteristics or factors that facilitate gaseous exchange at the level of the pulmonary alveolar. Look at the picture, please. First, large surface area because the lungs contain millions of pulmonary alveoli, very thin wall. The wall of the pulmonary alveolus and that of the blood vessels are very thin and permeable. Permeable means porous. It allows the passage of the gases from the pulmonary alveolus into the blood and from the blood into the pulmonary alveolus. Highly vascularized lungs. Look, teacher, at the, at the pictures. These are the, the, the pulmonary alveoli are very rich in, in, in a large number of blood vessels. Thank you.